All right, what's up boys? So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys all the softwares that I use, all the settings, everything that I use to trade on a daily basis, really. I get a lot of people who ask me for my book map settings. I've done videos on it, but I've tweaked them a little bit more. I also get people who ask me for the Sierra chart setup. So really in this video, we're just gonna go over my book map, my book map settings, and also the Sierra chart layout and that stuff. And yeah, so let's just get right into it. So, so I have made settings videos on book map before, but I made a few changes to how I use it. So I'm just gonna go over everything from, I'm actually gonna move myself over here. Or no, I'm gonna move myself down here. No, never mind. I'm not gonna move myself at all. All right. So whenever you first download Bookmap, I'm pretty sure it's gonna look something like this, or maybe a little bit more like this. I'm not really sure. I haven't downloaded it and installed it in a long time. I'm pretty sure that this is something I had to change, and that is just the contrast of the passive orders or the order book. And the way you do that, I'm actually blocking it. Let me move myself. And the way you do that is at this top left side of the screen here. You can see my mouse. So I have this turned all the way up because I don't want to see all these little limit orders. So I basically eliminate the noise by doing that. So then after that, the one thing I adjusted a little bit was my bubble settings. Now, let me move myself one more time. So I have my bubble settings around halfway, just a little bit past halfway for the sizing. What I changed recently was if you right click the bubbles go to volume dot settings. This is how I have my bubble set up. So I actually display the volume, the minimum displayed volume that I have is 60. And that is probably something you're gonna have to adjust as the market changes and certain conditions change. But for now, the minimum volume that is in a bubble is gonna be 60. So this once again, just helps eliminate the noise. If I would have put this, I traded most of my life without this setting adjusted. But as you can see, obviously you can see all of the orders, whether it's very small or large orders. So I just wanted to eliminate the noise. So I have mine on 60. That's going to be something that you're going to have to adjust and change as, as the market changes. So just keep that one in mind, but that's my bubble settings. And then one thing I'll also say is that I have my clustering on smart and basically what this does is you can see when i move this it basically puts it all in one general area so that you don't have your screen looking like this the whole time so like these are all of the orders at certain prices but it's just a lot more clear whenever you have it smart clustering on i like to have mine around two-thirds of the way up like that that's what i do and this stuff is all preference really like if you want to be someone who trades like this, go ahead. If you want to be someone who has it all the way up, I mean, that doesn't really make sense, but yeah, that is, that's the bubble settings for the most part. You can also do 2d, you can do 3d, you can adjust all of these things, the transparency. Some people like there's more transparent. I just have mine right around here. So yeah, these are more uh, preference things and really everything is going to be preference at the end of the day like there's no correct way to do anything like anything that i've just mentioned to you guys all that matters is that you're seeing the information you need to see and making decisions off of that so it's all preference at the end of the day this is how i have this is how i have developed my settings this is just what i like and what i'm used to another thing that you guys have asked me is how do you get the cvd on bookmap and you really just come down here to the bottom of the screen. Just click this arrow right here. I believe you're gonna have the CVD by default, so it should just come right up. But you know, you can adjust these things however you want. If you want CVD or not, then you can also have trade PL. And I guess this is your position. I'm not really sure. I don't even touch these things really. So all I have is the CVD up. Another thing I use is the absorption indicator. I just have it on automatic. I don't use the absorption indicator alone to identify absorption. The thing with the absorption indicator is it helps you a lot if like, a, I've explained this in other videos, but it helps you a lot if like a limit order comes in right at market price and you miss it and you don't see it. So like in this case, uh, 283 contracts came in right here, or maybe it was I guess 315, 314 right here. And they transacted pretty much at market price, but you didn't see them in the book. So it happened very quickly. Now, sometimes there will be a passive participant that does this multiple times and it's harder to, or I should say it's easier to miss it if you don't have the absorption indicator on because it'll actually pick it up for you. So it's not like 
the absorption indicator is the only way you can identify absorption. That's just not the case. So just keep that one in mind too with the absorption indicator, but it can be very helpful. This particular session, there's not as many examples I can show you guys, but like whenever you have an order, a market order that comes in and doesn't move price or just completely gets absorbed, you'll that that indicator will go off based on whatever settings it is figured to. I obviously love the book map depth of markets, like my favorite. This is what mine looks like. So I have the session volume profile. So after the session volume profile, I have the volume profile delta. Let's just scroll this down. So this is how I have mine laid out. You can customize these however you want. Make it your own, like make it how you want it. This is just how I have mine. And then I just scooch it over here. I basically trade like this. So I don't even look at the volume profile buy or sell really because I mean, I already have it up right here pretty much. So this is literally how I trade every single day. This is what the screen looks like. So the other settings that I haven't mentioned yet are the resets. Now I reset my SVP. I go to reset, reset configuration, and I have mine reset at the session open. That way I'm only seeing the regular trading hours profile. I also do this with the CVD as well. So yeah, to reset the CVD at RTH, you just go to right click the CVD, the actual line of it, cumulative volume delta settings, and then your reference points, you'll see the reset, mine's set at 830, I'm on central time. So I also have the same thing for the depth of market. So if I go into the DOM, um, my reset is at the session open time. And that is just, I just went in here, click the configure add ons section, go to the depth of market, reset options, and then you can configure this however you want. So I reset all of my tools for RTH, at least in book map. So yeah, it's all my book map settings that covers the order book, the heat map, or the bubbles. It's pretty much everything. Like that's all I changed and that's all I do. So those are my book map settings for you guys. Now I'm gonna move on to Sierra chart. All right, so for Sierra chart, this is what my Sierra chart looks like. If you guys want access to my chart book, I share this with my Discord community. Just hit the Discord and it will be in the chart files section. I'm gonna put my updated version in there right after this video. We'll just go from the top down. So I use the weekly volume profile with the Delta. Now this is the volume profile for the actual contract. In this case, it's obviously going to be the December contract. So, so I do look at this, but I don't look at it as much. And I really just use it for the higher time frame profile. Then also I do like to see Delta outliers if we have any Delta outliers. So there's the weekly profile. I also use a daily profile that I'll look at. It's kind of the same thing except my Delta is on the side here and this is also just allows me to see the delta outliers and i also have a 30 minute chart with the volume profiles behind it this includes the overnight session in it so like this particular profile right here this started as soon as globex opened for this day i use that and then the rest is my higher time frame chart i have different ones and then this would be the chart that i execute off of right here but the main thing that i'm using is the footprint chart this is what my footprint chart looks like. This is very easy to build. I have built one from scratch just like this. I've recreated it from scratch, but the way I initially got it was from a chart book that was shared with me that was based on Carmine's chart book and Carmine got his inspiration. I don't know if he got the actual chart file or not from a person named Smash Lido. So that's pretty much the inspiration behind this footprint chart, just so you guys know but this is very easy to build. You can build this exact footprint from scratch pretty easily, probably get it done within like 30 minutes to an hour. I've done it before, so I know you guys can do it, but yeah, this is my footprint chart. I have the Delta above the candle. The right column is the volume. The middle column is the volume. The left column is the Delta. And that is how I have my footprint set up. And then below that you have the Delta. This is the same, the same, as it is on top of the actual candle for the footprint. It's just represented differently. And the, the reason why I like having both is because sometimes you will have a Delta flip where, let me see if I can find an example of it. We're like, we're like right here, for example, you see how there was a wick. So this candle actually started out being negative Delta and then we flipped positive. So that is something to note as well sometimes. So like, I love, I love that. But yeah, this is my footprint chart. This is the main thing that I use Sierra chart for. Like I pretty much, I'm pretty much mainly using Sierra chart for the footprint chart. So to give you guys an insight on like how I have my actual trading desk set up, 
what it looks like is I have my trading view. So I have four monitors. You definitely don't need four monitors, but I do have four monitors. And what I like to have is the higher time frame chart. So like I'll have a 30 minute chart above me or it would be above me over here. So I have a 30 minute chart on my top left. On the top right, I have my footprint chart. On the bottom right, I have my book map. And on the left side is where I have my executions or any other chart. So like if, it, if I'm trading on top step, like I have it over there. But same thing with my execution chart, it'll be on the left. So it's like, so the way I like to have it is on the right side of my monitors, I have the order flow data. And on the left side is just the chart and execution. That's how I have mine set up. So as far as Sierra chart settings, I really can't even walk you guys through all of them in one video, but I've been using TradingView to chart a lot more than Sierra chart lately. That's kind of how I'm charting, but yeah, this is like mainly execution. I have the CVD right here. I really prefer looking at book map CVD if I'm going to be completely honest. So this CVD, I barely even look at it if I'm going to keep it a buck. I have the volume profile for the RTH session. This fills out. Like I said, if you guys want the Sierra chart settings, you can just use my chart book as a foundation and then tweak it how you want it. That's kind of like what I did for mine. So if you want that, it's in my Discord in the chart files section. And yeah, that's pretty much how I trade every single day. It's book map right in front of me. It's a higher time frame chart open and then it's also my execution charts open and that's it so yeah i hope this video helps you guys if you need a book map discount link is in the description and i'll catch you guys in the next one